Hi guys and welcome to this the video on using a finance solver to find interest rates, time taken and regular payments. Ooh, another really long title. My name is Darren from Ask Guru. Thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully you're about to find this video useful. Before I get into it, do me a favor, subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, the fact you're watching this video, if you just subscribe, it lets me know that someone out there is actually watching and that it's helpful. I mean, ultimately, I'm trying to be helpful to help you smash your VCE. Now, if you can do that, that would be awesome. And tell your mates and your teachers, this resource is there as well. I would be absolutely stoked. Now, again, I normally read through the learning objectives, but by the time you're in year 12, they're there, all right? As are these notes. You can download them from mathsguru.com, where there are downloadable notes. It's free to sign up. Oh, the excitement doesn't actually start, but it's going to get you through your VCE. So head over there and sign up if you will. Now, in the previous video, all right, we looked at the financial solver. I introduced, I told you, we looked at what all of these things meant, how we could read the question, and the context was really, really important. So if you haven't watched that video, I can't recommend it highly enough. It was pretty much one of my best videos I've done so far. And in fact, that's the only video I've done so far, so there's not much to follow with this one. But the point of it is, you've got to understand that when we have something like a loan will be paid off in 25 years, the fact that it says paid off tells me my future value is going to be zero. Uh, they'll give you an interest rate, a principal value, a payments per year. And if you remember from the previous video, all we need is seven, uh, sorry, six of the seven pieces of information, right? Happy, should we continue? I think so. So I think there are four questions here uh, that I can actually work through. Hopefully the video won't be too long. Minja puts 20,000 into a compound interest investment. Again, the fact it's compound interest is basically just saying use your finance solver. She's putting 20,000 in. If you remember anything from the last video, she is giving or he is giving away money at $20,000. That's going to make me or him or her feel pretty bad. So minus 20, one, two, three. So that's got to be negative. And everyone, if they ever make mistakes with these questions, I'm getting very animated now, it's because of that minus sign, all right? The plus and the minus in the wrong way will give you horrible answers. And to answer one of the questions from one of my students today, well, if you get the first bit wrong and you follow it through, is that bad? Well, we try and give consequential marking, but ultimately after a while it just becomes too challenging, right? Because your answers are so out there wrong, it's probably very hard for us to try and work out where you got it wrong, all right? So just be careful here. Interest compounds monthly. All right, that's important. We know that if it compounds monthly, that's basically giving me the idea that PPY and CPY are 12. She adds $50 a month. Well, she's giving away even more money, so she's giving away $50 a month, so that's going to be minus 50. And she wants her investment to reach $40,000. Well, again, that's code. The English language here says that's her future value. So it's got to be 40. Oh, I don't know what's happened there. Let's just go back and see what happened there. 40123, so $40,000. Hmm. <clears throat> Didn't realize my screen just gone a little bit blurry there. We'll work out what's going on with that in just a moment. So now, again, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that where the future value is negative, uh, sorry, where the present value is negative, the future value is positive. These have to be the opposite signs, or it's all going to go horribly wrong. So in 10 years, why have they given me 10 years? Well, we also need to know N. So that's going to be 10 times ooh, monthly, all right? 10 times 12. Find the annual interest rate. Well, that's okay because now I is the only thing I don't know. So having got all that information, he said, thinking of the worst place he could have actually put all that information because I've now got to go and do it again. I'm going to use the TI Inspire guys if you're a Classpad user. There, it's pretty much the same functionality, same things to put in. Um, I always said I would show you where things differ massively, but all I'm going to do now is put in the information. So that became 10 times 12. My interest rate I'm trying to find. If you're wondering where these previous values came from, they came from another question that I was working on before this video. Uh, her principal value was minus 20, 1, 2, 3. A payment of minus 50. A future value of 40, 1, 2, 3. And basically the rest of it was okay. 12, 12. And so our interest rate Hit enter, comes out, and it says around your answer to two decimal places. So 4.81%. So there we go. So in that situation, 4.81%. Now, if you're wondering what's the difference from the previous video, uh, nothing really. They've just changed what it is they're trying to find. And again, so long as they give you six pieces of information, you can find the seventh, right? It doesn't matter what they give you in the question, that you can always find that missing part. 
Okay, so moving on to the next question. Winston puts 20,000 into an investment. Okay, well, that seems very similar to the previous question, but we'll give it a go. So he's giving money away. So my present value is minus 20, 1, 2, 3. Uh, paying 5.1%. 5.1. Compounding monthly. So that's going to be 12 and 12 again. If Winston wants his investment to be worth at least $40,000, in five years' time, what is the minimum he will need to add each month? Okay, for a moment there, I thought this was the same question. I thought I'd literally just copy the same question and change the name, but no. So, in this situation, five times, five times what? Well, again, it's always going to be whatever that value is there. Five times 12. Firing up my calculator again. Really got to put that screen in a different place. So, five times 12. Hit enter. What do we have? My interest rate was 5.1. Uh, principal value again was minus 20123. Payment we're trying to find. He wants $40,000. So in this situation, I'm just going to hit enter and out comes my payment. So knowing how to read the question, put it into the financial solver, is actually making life a little bit easier for me. A, if Winter wants an investment to be worth it in five years' time, what is the minimum he will need to add each month? So in that situation, $208.34. Now we need to be careful now because... <clears throat> I can't keep that 0.16 for the rest of the question. I'll explain that. Oh, no. We'll come back to that. It's not important to the question. If Winston invests 1000 each month immediately after interest is calculated, and again, that comes down to the fact that this thing here says end. Uh, so don't worry about that. It's just trying to make sure that we use end there. What is the minimum number of months required for his investment to at least triple in value? Whew. Okay. So there's a lot of info in there. Triple in value. If it's tripling in value and he starts with $20,000, well, three times that is going to be 60,000. So I now know that my future value is going to be 60, one, two, three. The payment, it says here in the question, if Winston invests $1,000 each month, that's going to be minus 1,000 because he's giving away more money. What is the minimum number of months? Well, the rest of it stays the same. And because it wants the minimum number of months, we're going to find my N value, right? So that at least triple that value. When I hit enter, 34.32. And the trick to this question was, do you understand what it means by minimum? First things first, I can't pay money in 34.32 months. It doesn't make any sense. If I only put in 34 months, and I'm going to show you what's going to happen. If I change that 34 now, round it down, and go to my future value, I only get $59,598. That is not at least 60,000. So rounding is gonna become really, really important because if I now change that to 35, and then go down to future value, then lo and behold, I get $60,851. So in this situation, part B, the answer would be 35 years uh, but, uh, but, uh, but what is the minimum number of months? And again, read the question, all right? Is it 35 years? No, it isn't 35 years. It's actually 35 months, all right? So again, making sure that you write down the right units there is going to make my life a lot, lot easier. Sifo borrows $10,000. Oh, I'm borrowing $10,000. That means I'm getting money. I'm very happy now. Thank you very much. So present value is $10,000. Uh, to be repaid in 59 equal monthly payments followed by a 60th payment of less than $1 more than the regular payment. Okay, so again, we're really going to make 60 payments, right? They're really making a meal of this. Interest is charged at a rate of 8% per annum, compounding monthly. So again, 12 and 12. Find the regular monthly payment amount. Right, well, first things first, 59 equally, equally monthly payments followed by a 60th payment of less than one dollar more all right so the first thing i'm going to do is just work out what 60 payments is going to be all right so 60 payments when i do that firing up my financial solver hold on a moment what does it say find the regular monthly payment okay so if it's a regular monthly payment then our final value is also going to be zero because i want to pay off my loan right let's go n we're trying to find i think oh we know 60 8 10 1 2 3 Payment, we're trying to find future value at this moment, we'll say zero. So my payment's going to come out to be $202.76. So for part A, my regular monthly payment is going to be $202.76. Now you're going to say, why didn't I do 59? Because the loan is going to pay out after 60 payments. So that's the number of payments my loan is going to actually, hopefully, reach zero. 
The reason it isn't going to reach zero is because of all of these decimal points. Sorry, you can't see, but all of these decimal points, when I round these decimal points to different numbers, then basically it is going to basically fudge things a little bit. I'll explain that. Part B, find the final payment. All right, now what I'm trying to say here is, I can't pay $202.76, uh, sorry, 76, 202.7639428441. I can't do that. So what I actually do is I'm going to do $202.76. I've got to change that value. Now what you're gonna find out is if I do that, my final value after 60 payment is actually going to be not zero. It's actually gonna be minus 0 0.3. 0.29. So minus 0 0.29. What does that mean? Well, I've got to give away. I basically still owe another 29 cents. So my final payment, my regular payment is $202.76, but then I've got to add on that extra 29 cents that I still have to pay the bank, in which case for my final payment. So again, can't do this in any other way. Unfortunately, 202.76, you have to sort of crash out the financial solver, plus 0 0.29 gives me $203.05. Kerching. All right, find the total of the repayments of the loan. Now, again, whew, this is where life gets a bit silly because you've got to keep the bigger picture. Find the total of the repayments of the loan. And you're going to say, well, hold on a moment. I'm just going to pay back the $10,000, aren't I? Because that's what I owe. No, because interest gets charged. If you go back to our financial solver, menu 81, we paid... $202, so if part C, we're paying $202.76 for 60 months. Now you're gonna say, why is it 60 months? That's given in the question. Now I can guarantee you, when you actually put that into your calculator and work it out, he says, hitting the escape again, $202.76. Oh, hold on a moment, and I have gotta be careful there, because find the total of the repayments of the loan. That's not actually true, and I think this is a bit of a trick of the question, because we're only paying that for how many times? 59 times, so it's going to be 59, but I've got to add on that final payment of $203.05. Whew, nearly made a silly mistake there. So $202.76 times that by 59. I'm going to add on, if you will please, $203.05. Hit enter, and basically the total of my repayments will be $12,165.89. Ouch! I borrowed 10,000, I've given back 12,000. Find the total interest. Well, the interest is the difference between those, isn't it? So in which case, for part D, my interest is going to be given by 12,165.89 minus the 100,000 that I borrowed, uh, sorry, the 10,000 I borrowed. And again, if I do my answer, minus 10, one, two, three, I get $2,165 and 89 cents. So let's do that there. So it's $2,165.89. Now, these two last parts of the question are massive. I've seen them on SACs, I've seen them on exams, over and over and over and over again. Whenever they want to know the total repayments of the loan, you are going to take the repayment, all right? So in this situation, $202.76, you will multiply it by the number of whole payments and then add on that final payment. And then your interest will be the difference between whatever figure you got here and how much we took out. Joe invests 200,000 into an annuity. He's investing, it's gotta be minus. So minus 200, one, two, three. Uh, interest compounding monthly, 12 and 12. What interest rate would allow Joe to withdraw 2,500 each month? Withdraw. That means I'm getting money, or Joe's getting money, and that's positive. So that's going to be 2,500 for 10 years. All right, so 10 times my compounding period of 12. Do I have an interest rate? It wants me to find the interest rate, because the question says basically find the interest rate. So what's my future value? Because I haven't filled in anything there. Ah, well, basically... It wants to know, uh, my annuity will be paid out, basically. So in that situation, there'd be no money left in the account. So bring up my TI Inspire. Let's go menu 8-1. Now let's put in the values. 10 times 12, tab. We're trying to find the interest rate, minus 200, 123. 
my payment, 2,500, my future value of zero. And so what interest rate would we need? Can we have an answer, please? Eight point, what does it say? Round your decimal to one decimal place, 8.7%, right? So again, understanding how to use your CAS to put that information in, really important. Assume the interest rate is 5% per annum, right? So change that to five. And that Joe receives a regular monthly payment of $3,000. So 3,000 has now become my PMT. For how many months will Joe receive a regular payment? Okay, so a regular payment, it's wanting our value of N. So again, the context has changed. 78.26 months. Now, what am I gonna round that to? Well, basically, it says, how many months will Joe receive a regular payment? Doesn't mean that it's pay, getting the same amount. So actually, he's going to get 79 months. That last month, though, he will get 78 months of full money, and he'll get slightly less on the last one. So in that situation, how many months will Joe receive a regular payment? I'd be putting 79. Assume the interest rate is 5% per annum, and Joe wishes to be paid monthly payments for 10 years. So monthly payments 10 times 12. How much would he receive each month? Well, again, my future value is zero. An annuity, we want it to run out of money. It's like a big piggy bank, it's gonna run out of money. So in this situation, the question says, well, can you find the payment? How much would he receive each month? So I've changed my value, put enter, and in that situation, out comes a positive value of 2121.31. Why is it positive? Because he's gonna get money. He wants to receive this money. And if Joe receives the regular monthly payment found in part C for 119 months, 119 months, what will his final payment be correct to the nearest cent? All right, so if Joe receives a regular monthly payment found in part C for 119 months, what will his final payment be? So that's basically saying, what's my future value? 2112.58. Hmm. Ah, this is actually a trick of the question. What it's actually saying is he's got 119 months at that $2,121. In fact, we want to find out what he's going to get on the 120th month. So if I hit enter here, I get minus 9e minus 10, a very, 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 very small value. What will his final payment be? Now, what you want to see there is me having a bit of a breakdown. Now, why? Because I actually fell foul of my own problem here. Whenever I needed to... I've got to basically change this to two decimal places because my calculator went, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. And that minus 9e minus 10 is basically zero. So the calculator is going, well, no, stupid. You told me it was zero. So back to reality. If I now hit future value, there we go. I actually get that his final payment, if he's paid $2,121.31, he basically will be, what's that? owed four cents there will only be four no five cents left in the account so in which case his final payment will be 2121.31 plus 0 0.05 and so his final payment will be 2121.36 now again if this isn't making sense to you other than the fact that i don't think i'm making sense at the moment but that's a whole new discussion then go back and watch the video again all right please break this down but what i'm saying here is if we go back and put in, uh, what I'm saying here is all payments should be to two decimal places when I'm using them for calculations later, yeah? Rather than 119 months, the trick of the question was, yes, he'll receive 119 months at 2,121.31, but we want to find out what his 120th payment, if it's paid 120 times, what would his future value be? And in that situation, five cents. And that positive means it owes me money. So I basically can take out the $2,121.31 and the additional five cents, and that will close down my account. Life is good, fabulous. And believe it or not, that is the end of that video, all right? So hopefully it has been useful. Financial Solver continues in the next series of videos, and we deal with interest-only loans and, and, and prints, uh, perpetuities, and again, these are all just little tricks on how to use your financial solver. But I'm gonna call it a day, mathsguru.com, head over there, sign up absolutely free, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you can, uh, tell your mates, tell your teachers, and hopefully I'll see you in another video. If not, please guys, take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.